Maxi Kleba is back for the Dallas Mavericks. The American Airlines Center will be at near full capacity as the Mavericks look to end a 10-year drought in a rematch against the Los Angeles Clippers. This is the gray area right here on Kevin Gray Sports. My name is Kevin Gray. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right there for all things Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube. And you can find me on your home of the Dallas Cowboys and Texas Rangers 105.3 The Fan. Maxi Kleba is back just in time for game one against the Los Angeles Clippers. One of the Mavericks' most versatile defenders is back in this lineup where you could see a lineup that includes Luka Doncic, Tim Hardaway Jr., Dorian Finney-Smith, Christos Porzingis, and the returning Maxi Kleba, which is vital against a Clippers team that's number one in the NBA shooting the three-pointer, shooting over 41% from the three-point line this season. This is also a Clippers team that's number three in the NBA in terms of offensive rating. So we know the kind of firepower for a Clippers team that has at least four guys that shoot at least 40% from the three-point line, how vital Maxi Kleba is going to be on the defensive end, where he will be the primary defender against one Kawhi Leonard, which Rick Carlisle has talked about in the past. So for Dorian Finney-Smith, Tim Hardaway Jr., Josh Richardson, and now Maxi Kleba, the assignment of being able to defend guys like Paul George, who averaged over 23 points per game this year, shooting over 41% from the three-point line, and of course taking on a two-time NBA Finals MVP, a two-time NBA champion in Kawhi Leonard. Their hands are going to be full in trying to defend this team and the Clippers who are deep, they are talented, and they're also versatile on both the offensive and defensive end. The Dallas Mavericks and the Los Angeles Clippers played three games this year with the Mavericks taking two out of those three. Of course, you remember the 51-point beat down inside of Los Angeles early on in the season where the Mavericks got their first win of the season. The final two games were inside the American Airlines Center where it was announced that the Mavericks will have near full capacity for games three and four in this first-round matchup against the Los Angeles Clippers, which is a huge boost for a team that's going to need all the help that it can get and being able to have a near-capacity home crowd inside the America Airlines Center where it will be rocking in games three and four is going to be massive for this young basketball team. But as we rewind back to March 15th and March 17th, the Clippers won the first game 109-99 to despite the fact that Luka Doncic had a triple-double with 25 points, 10 rebounds, and 16 assists. Kawhi Leonard was especially good in that game, though. He had 22 points and four steals. The X factor in that game, though, Josh Richardson and Dorian Finney-Smith would have combined 6 of 16 from the field for just 14 points, although Christos Porzingis played well in that matchup where he had 22 points and 7 rebounds. But a couple of nights later on March 17th, the Mavs got a 105-89 win where Luka Doncic had his fourth 40-point game of the season, dropping 42 points, 9 assists. He also had three steals and two blocks in that game. The Mavericks shot 44% from the three-point line that night and actually out-rebounded the Clippers 43-37. to which is going to be huge because Porzingis was really good in that game defensively. He had 11 points, 13 rebounds, and a couple of blocks. And the Mavs had all five of their starters in double figures and had a team-high seven blocks in that game. So that shows you defensively what this team is capable of against some of the best teams in all of the NBA. They held Kawhi Leonard on that night to just 9 of 21 from the field, although Paul George had 28 that night. So Maxi Kleba's return on the defensive end is going to be huge for a Los Angeles Clippers team who is the third best offensive rated team in the NBA. And for the Mavericks, they're going to need all that they can handle in terms of the defensive versatility of Maxi Kleba. This team is just 21st in the NBA this season in terms of defensive rating. So now as we spin this forward with the Mavericks who won 33 out of their last 49 games, will now have an opportunity to take on a Los Angeles Clippers team that is deep, talented, and versatile when you start thinking about the Serge Ibaka's of the world, also the Nicholas Batum's, the DeMarcus Cousins, the Avika Zubach's of the world who kill the Mavericks on the offensive glass. They're going to need all the help that they can get. Here is Luka Doncic talking about how excited he is about the matchup and taking on the Los Angeles Clippers for a second time this season. Luca, you mentioned a lot of trash talking in the series last year, and obviously there a lot of that was with you and Marcus Morris. You know, uh, a lot of heated moments. What What are your thoughts on 
uh, matching up with you know with him probably guarding you a lot again. I mean, he's gonna be okay. You know, it's uh, he's a hell of a player, hell of a defender. Uh, you know, trash talk is always there, and if it's not, you know, you're not really competing. So it's gonna be great. Actually, he he apologized to me on the 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 one that he stepped. Uh, in the game we played in Dallas, I think, and you know it's all good. But trash talk is always gonna be there. And like I said, if you're not gonna trash talk, you're not really competing, especially in the playoffs. So Luka Doncic is saying, "Look, it's one heck of a matchup. We're super excited to be taking on the scene. The amount of trash talk that's gonna be taking place in this particular game is going in the series is going to be particularly really good. Obviously, if you're not trash talking, you're not competing." Obviously, that brings us to Marcus Morris and Luka Doncic. This series took a turn, of course, when Kristaps Porzingis went down in the series and missed the final three games after having a 34.13 rebound game. Yes, Luka Doncic in that first round series was absolutely spectacular, averaging over 31 points per game, nearly 10 rebounds, and nearly nine assists in the six games that they played against the Los Angeles Clippers. But things obviously did not go the way that the Mavericks wanted them to with Marcus Morris stepping on Luka Doncic's ankle and the histrionics that took place in that series, the physicality, the mind games, all the things that you saw from that series could take place again in this series. But here's the difference in this year's Mavericks team versus last year's. Number one, health. Jalen Brunson, Dwight Powell, available in this series, unlike last year where Dwight Powell missed with a torn Achilles. And, of course, Jalen Brunson was missing with a shoulder injury. You've had additional depth added to this team with guys like Willie Cauley-Stein, Josh Richardson added to this team. So while both of these teams may be rematching each other from a playoff series from a season ago, these are two very drastically different ball clubs. The Los Angeles Clippers, with the amount of depth that they have, with the Rajon Rondos, the Patrick Beverleys of the world in the backcourt. Then you have guys like DeMarcus Cousins and others in the front court with Zubac and others. This is going to be one heck of a matchup in the first round. And obviously, there's been a lot of conversation about how the Mavericks may have been wanted by the Los Angeles Clippers because of how they tanked their final two games to find themselves dropping to the fourth seed, especially that pathetic thing that they did against the Oklahoma City Thunder and potentially tanking that game. But nonetheless, we're here now. And for Rick Carlisle, a guy who, of course, won the 2011 NBA championship with the Dirt Nowitzkis of the world and others, they haven't won a playoff series th since then. Is there pressure to win a playoff series with Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis? Here is what Rick Carlisle had to say. You know, when you're part of the organization like the Dallas Mavericks and there's a game scheduled there's pressure to win that game and when you come and work for this organization you work for Mark Cuban you got to be somebody that loves pressure and I keep getting questions about you know is there pressure to advance hell yeah there's pressure to advance and that's what that's what this is all about but you've got to love pressure and you got to you got to find ways to make pressure your friend and this is a difficult series. It's a tough series. Um, but we're a championship organization, and we're, just, we're not just looking to advance one round of the playoffs. I mean, ultimately, our goal is always to win a championship. And so, you know, we preach championship habits. Um, and in our, in our prep, you know, we're getting ready for a team that is a great basketball team in the Clippers with two major superstars and, and, a, and a very well-constructed group of role players. And we're going to have to be on point. We're going to have to be right. Um, and it's a great challenge, but we're looking forward to it, man. So it's like, heck yeah. There's pressure to win when you work for this organization. And yes, you look to the summer potentially where they could find themselves in the free agency market with guys like Rashawn Holmes and Lonzo Ball, any number of guys that you want to name, the John Collins of the world, who the Mavericks may be potentially trying to look at to improve this roster. But when you start thinking about this team in terms of the Dorian Finney-Smiths of the world, the Tim Hardaway Juniors who were in the final year of his four-year $71 million contract, Josh Richardson most likely will opt in into his player option going into this upcoming season at nearly $12 million. The time is now for this Mavericks team to capitalize on an opportunity that's been presented to them. It's very rare when you have an opportunity to rematch against a team that defeated you in the playoffs the year before. That's exactly what the Mavericks have in this opportunity to take on 
the Los Angeles Clippers. I know and how talented the Clippers are, but I know the difference that this Mavericks team is playing with in terms of their confidence. Yes, at times play down to their competition. Yes, this is a team that lost to the Sacramento Kings three times in a couple of weeks span. Yes, this is a team that lost on the road against the Houston Rockets, but this is also a team that beat the Brooklyn Nets two out of three times. This is also a team that went on the road to New York City inside the Mecca in Madison Square Garden and held Julius Randle and the New York Knicks to just 86 points. This is also a team that knows that when they win the first quarter, they are 27-0 on the season. There's a lot of things that are going in favor of the Mavericks going into this series, but more importantly, they have been much better in clutch time this year. They're 18-15 and 15 in the clutch in the NBA this year. That's 10th in the NBA versus last year where they were 17-24 and 24 and just 21st in the NBA in terms of clutch time. That will be huge in this series where they will get everything plus the kitchen sink thrown at them from a mental standpoint, a physicality standpoint, but also from a deep Clippers team looking to reestablish themselves as a true title contender after what happened to them in the playoffs in the bubble last year. Needless to say, this is going to be a massive series, a fun series between two teams that may not necessarily like each other, but at the same time, they know the competitive stakes on both sides here. And more importantly, if you're a Mavericks fan, this is going to be a shot at redemption, whether it be personally for a guy like Christos Porzingis or team-wise against a Clippers team who, yes, may be a little bit better than them on paper, but make no mistake about it. The Mavericks aren't scared of the Clippers, nor should they be. They have one of the five best players in the world who's going to be a first-team All-NBA performer for a second consecutive year in the precocious Luka Doncic and if number 77 is on your side you got a shot against the Los Angeles Clippers let the playoffs begin you can find me on Twitter Facebook and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports be sure to hit that subscribe button for all things Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube this has been another episode of the Gray Area we'll talk to you later peace